Hello, this is Bible Review and Preview for Wednesday. We were wondering, Joe and I were wondering, what you thought of the video yesterday of Jesus claiming to be or exist before Abraham. And uh, did you watch all the way to the end, Joe? We sure did. And were you surprised? Oh, that was scary when those people were picking up those big rocks. Yes, they were. And how did Jesus get away? I don't know. It just seemed like he disappeared. It did. It seemed like, you know, the Bible says that they couldn't kill Jesus. They couldn't take his life from him until it was the right time. And we're going to talk about that in our Bible verse a little bit today, too. The way that Jesus' life was taken from him, uh, it actually, Jesus said it wasn't taken, that he gave it. And the way that he died was exactly what the Bible predicted. Now, those were pretty big rocks, and the people got really mad. Uh, Joe, do you think that the relatives of Abraham, those who are related to Abraham, are the uh, the true children of God? Hmm. I'm not sure. I think maybe everybody is a child of God. Well, do you know there is a verse in Galatians that says, for we are all the children of God. Well, see there, the Bible says it. But that's not the end of the verse. The Bible says, for we are all the children of God by faith in Jesus. Oh, well, that changes things. That's right. So the Pharisees needed to learn that even though they were related to Abraham, they needed faith in Jesus to be their deliverer. I get it. That's right. So... Uh, and all of us have a sin nature that we need to deal with, uh, and, and we need to go to Jesus. We need spiritual life, not just physical life. Now, today you're going to see in John chapter 9 a story about a man who gets mud in his eyes. Oh, no. That does not sound healthy to get mud in your eyes. That's right. And Jesus actually spits in the dirt and makes mud and puts it in his eyes. Oh, well, he might get in trouble for that. Well, you know, it doesn't sound very sanitary, but Jesus is God and he is doing something special, even though, well, you just have to watch it. So do you know that the Pharisees are going to get upset again? Again, why? Because Jesus does something that no one else can do. I think they're a little jealous. No one can heal somebody who's been born blind. This man has been blind his whole life. His whole life? Yes, his whole life. And the, the disciples ask a question. They say to Jesus, why is this man blind? Well, because he was born blind. Yeah, but they want to know if it's because he sinned or, well, he wasn't really old enough to sin when he was just born, but, well, I don't know. <laughs> Even babies can cry for their own way sometimes, but I, they also asked maybe it was because his parents sinned that he was born blind. Oh, well, that gives you something to think about. Well, I want you to think about that, too. And Jesus does give an answer. So we're going to be talking about why bad things happen again. Um, when, when you watch, and please don't try that at home of putting mud in your eyes. Oh, I think I'd like to try that. No, I don't think that's good for you. I don't think it's going to make your eyes better unless it's Jesus putting the mud in your eyes. And Jesus wants us to understand that the Pharisees are blind. Well, really? They're all blind too? Not physically. They are blind spiritually. And Jesus wants them to open their eyes and to trust him to be their deliverer. Do you think they will, Joe? 
Well, I don't know. Those guys seem pretty stubborn. Oh, they do. All right, so enjoy John 9. Let's go over our verse now. And... Why? Okay. And in your verse, you know, verse 1, uh, the first verse, verse 3, talks about the scriptures. That means the Old Testament scriptures. And when it says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, it means that the way Jesus died was what was predicted, that his hands would be pierced, uh, that he would be thirsty. There were many predictions made about what kind of death Jesus would die hundreds of years before he came. Also, it means that he would die for our sins. In Isaiah 53, it talked about how the deliverer, God's servant, would die for our iniquities in our place. He would give his life. And when you are thinking of this, I want you to know that it is actually something that the people, the early Christians after Jesus rose from the dead and the church got started, the early Christians had this, these verses as a creed. They memorized this. And they wanted everybody to know what they believed. So, you know, we have the Christian creed. We say in our Christian school every morning, well, this was memorized as a creed. So let's, let's say it together. Ready? For I delivered first, oops, I messed up. Sorry. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Very good. Enjoy the video. Oh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your words to us, the scriptures that they can tell us what to look for in Jesus to know that he was the true deliverer sent to die for our sins and rise again. We pray that we would go to your words in the Bible, that we would not be spiritually blind, that uh, the devil would not be able to deceive us, that we would know your word well and know more and more who Jesus is and be able to trust him and love him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, goodbye.